Hey guys, today's video is going to be about the math count sprint round, okay? But before we go over the sprint round, first you have to know what math counts is and like how it works. So math counts is a competition, a math competition, with four rounds in it. Those four rounds are the sprint round, which is what we'll be talking about today, the target round, the team round, and the countdown round. Each of these rounds have a different structure and a different focus. And in later videos, we'll go over the other rounds, but today it's going to be the sprint round. But also, in addition to these four rounds, Math Counts has four levels. Okay? And at each level, the players go through a full Math Counts competition, and most of them do all four rounds. All right? So those levels are the school round, where players from players in one school compete to make the school team, and, and then they try to advance to the chapter round. In the chapter round, teams from different schools meet up in one local area and do the math counts competition. And then the winners advance to the state round. The state round is um, just like the chapter round, except for teams all across the state. And then from the state round, the winning teams advance to the national round. And the winner of the national round is crowned the national champion. National champion. Okay? So that's that's math counts overall. Now let's let's focus on the sprint round in, and get into the specifics of that. So the sprint round is 30 questions in 40 minutes. So it, it really emphasizes speed. In fact, if you average out your time, you'll see that it'll be roughly 80 seconds per question, which is about a minute and a half, okay? But it's not gonna spread out perfectly like that. What you'll notice is that at the beginning, you'll have easy questions that take like 20 to 30 seconds. And then as you progress through the test, You'll, you'll get to harder questions that can take you a full two to three minutes. So it's all about cutting corners and trying to get every question done as fast as possible. And in addition to all that, there's no wrong answer penalty. Which means, yes, you can and you should guess. Preferably educated guesses that you have a chance of getting right. But if you have no options and you just don't know what to write, a wild guess cannot hurt you, all right? And that, that's the basic strategy for math counts. Obviously, for each in, for different types of questions, there are different strategies to get them done faster. But as far as test taking goes, that's the strategy. And don't be afraid to skip, too. Now let's look at some sample questions. Uh, this first question goes by switching two of the digits two of the digits of the number 123,456, Rodrigo obtains a new number that is 1,980 more than the original. What is the product of the two digits Rodrigo switched? So, you start with the number 123,456, and then your new number has the same number of digits, but two of them are switched, and it is 1,980 greater than the original number. So, the easy way to do it to do this would be to just add 1,980 to the original number and then find the two numbers that were switched and multiply them. But, since we were talking about cutting corners, we're going to do just that here. What we're going to do is we're going to add by place value. So, first we'll add the ones place. We have a 6 here and a 0 here. So, because 6 plus 0 is 6, we know that the ones place of our new number will also be 6. And in the tens place, we follow the same pattern. We start with the five and we're adding an eight. And since eight plus five is 13, we're only gonna take that ones place from that. So our new tens digit is three. And just right there, we can see that we went from a five to a three. So since we, we know that only two numbers were switched, these have to be our two numbers. So we can multiply them, and then we get 15 as our final answer. 
So just right there, you've seen how skipping steps is really important if you want to get it done fast and knowing what the question is asking, right? They didn't want to know what the full number was. They just wanted to know what the two numbers that were being switched were and what the product of that was. So just be aware of what you're trying to find out when you're solving these questions so you can skip some steps if you need to. Okay, that question was pretty easy. That it would actually probably be um, one of the beginning to the middle questions. So beginning to middle questions. And it should take you like 10, 20 seconds. But the second question is not going to be as easy. All right. It says all of our rolls, three fair standard six sided dice. What is the probability that there is at least one pair of dice whose top face is sum to six? And it also asks you to express your answer as a common fraction. So the first step to this is to find the total number of possibilities. We know there are three dice and each dice has six possibilities on them. So we multiply them all together and we can get 216 total possibilities. And that's our total. So that's the first step done. Now what we need to do is find how many of those 216 core correspond to our condition and that condition is where two of the dice add up to six so there are multiple strategies for this one strategy would to be just list them all out but like I said before we're trying to be as fast as possible and that is not the fastest way so we need to think of a more efficient way so one way to one way to be more efficient is to try and split it up and organize your um, counting. So what we're going to do is we're going to list out the different combinations of two numbers we can get to add up to six that, that are rollable from the dice. So the six numbers you can roll on a dice are a one, two, three, four, five, and a six. So what are the different combinations of two of these numbers that can add up to six? Well, you've got one and five, two plus four, and three plus three, right? Because you can roll two threes. So these are your three ways. And you can't get roll of zero, so six plus zero is not an option. So these are our three different rolls right here. Let me get rid of that. Now we just need to figure out all the different ways where two of the dice are a one and a five, a two and a four, or a three and a three. So first let's look at the different ways where there are one and a five. And let's make a table of values for that. So we've got first, second, third dice. Now, here is where the first and the second dice are the one and the five. You can also have a five and a one. And then you can also have the second and the third dice having one and five and five and one. And you can have the first and the third dice having one and five and five and one. But you see all these blanks? These, these are for that extra dice. And we're still rolling them. So we've got to fill out the values of this that would work. But, and technically we could just say each one is one through six. However, if we did that, certain rows would start having overlaps. Like for example, this row says one in the first dice, five in the second dice, and one through any number in the third dice, right? But if we take a look at this row, it's any number in the first dice, a five in the second dice, and a one in the third dice. In both of these sets, one, five, one is a roll that can happen. See here, one, five, and then any number in the third dice, and here, any number in the first dice, and then five, one. So we need to structure our table so that there are no repeated rolls. So let's, let's be a little more strategic about this. So these first two rows can be anything one through six because there's nothing to be repeated yet. But now we've got to be a little more strategic starting here. If we, if we say anything from one through six in this row, then the roll five, one, five will be repeated here and here. So that means that the value five cannot be rolled in the first dice in this row because then it would repeat from this row. So that's this row. In this row, again, it can be anything from one through six, but this time it can't be a one 
because if I rolled a 1, then I would have 151, which would fall into this set as well, into that row as well. So that 1 can't, 1 is not an option there. Now for these last two rows. Just like before, it can be anything 1 through 6, except for a few exceptions. If I roll a 1, that makes the dice roll 1, 1, 5, which falls under this set, right? Any number in the first dice, a 1 and a 5. So, it cannot be a 1. But that's not all. We also need to check for 5. If I roll a 5, I get a 1, 5, 5, right? But that falls under this set right here, right? 1 in the first dice, 5 in the second dice, and any number in the third dice. So we can't roll a 5 either. And now let's look at the last row. 1 through 6, let's test 1. That would be a 5, 1, 1 which would fall under this row. So we can't have the, a 1. What about 5? That would be a 5, 5, 1, which would fall under this row. So we can't have that either. So we're done. We, we've cut, we've, now we've listed out all of the different roles where you can use a 1 and a 5 added together to get 6. So let's count them up. This row right here has six different roles in it that ha like contains different six different row roles same with this row this row has five different roles because this could be any value besides five so that's five different values here this same with this row this row has four and this row has four roles so in total that is 30 roles so Let's erase all of this stuff. If you didn't get it, feel free to pause earlier or rewind to get it, to write it down or figure it out if you're having trouble, but we're moving on. So this combination of two numbers has 30 rolls that satisfy it. Now let's look at two plus four and let's make another table of values. We'll take it over here. So we'll make a table of values again, first, second, third dice, and we'll list all the different ways two and four can be added together. Two, four, four, two, two, four, four, two, two, four, four, two. Okay, and again, just like before, these first two rows can be anything one through six, but as soon as we get to the this this third row we need to we have to start being more careful so it can be anything one through six except let's try four okay if we roll four in the first dice the combina that that dice roll all together is a four two four which falls under this set right here this that row right there so it can't be a four for this row let's try two that, that would make the roll 242, two, which would fit under this roll. So we can't have that either. Whoa. So let's get rid of that. Now for the final two rows, we've got 1 through 6. Let's try 2. That would make the roll 224, two, which would fall under this row. So we've got to get rid of that one too. Let's try 4. That would make it 244. Four which would fall under that row. So we've got to get rid of that one too, we, as well. I don't want to keep saying two, it'll confuse you. So final row, one through six, let's try two. It would create a roll of four, two, two, which falls under this row. So we've got to get rid of that one. Now let's try four. That would create a roll of four, four, two that would fall under this row so we've got to get rid of four so let's count them up now this row has six values same with this row this row has four, five values and so does this and this row has and these two rows have four different rows so we add them all up and we get 30 rows once again now you might be tempted to to see the pattern and assume that when you're at that for this last for this last one 
it'll be the same number and we'll have 30, but that would be a stretch and that would be jumping to conclusions. So let's just see it through. Okay, so this is 30 rules. Let me erase all of that and let's go to this one, 3 plus 3. All right, we'll make a table of values again, first, second, third. We'll list out all the different ways we can combine three. However, you can't switch it. So like before we had like a four and a two, and then we would flip it and get a two and a four. But with a three and a three, when we flip it, we just get a three and a three again. So there's no point in flipping. So we'll just list out three and a three in the first and second, three and a three in the second and third dice, and then a three and a three in the first and the third dice. And now let's just list out all the different possibilities for the extra dice. This first row can be 1 through 6 because there's nothing before it. This second row can be anything 1 through 6 except if we try 3, we roll a 3, 3, 3, which already falls under this row. So we can't have that. Now for this final row, we can have anything 1 through 6, but if we try 3, yet again, we get a 3, 3, 3. And that's... That repeats both this row and this row, so we can't have that. So let's erase that. And now let's count them up. So this row has got um, six values. This row's got five values. This row has five values. When you add them up, you get 16. So we can replace this with... 16 rolls. See, I, I, I told y'all we shouldn't have stuck to the pattern. It's different. The two numbers are the same. So now these are our, our rolls for each individual one. We can combine them and get 76 total rolls that satisfy our condition here. We got to divide 76 rolls by 216 total. And that gets us a final answer. And when we simplify that, we get a final answer of 19 over 54 as our probability um, that there is at least one pair of dice whose top face is sum to six. Okay, that concludes our video on the math count sprint round. Um, as you can see, a lot of these questions might seem complicated or extra at first, but if you just try and think about them from a different perspective you can often find really quick and more and efficient methods to solve them okay so um that we got these from the math counts website we'll link it in the description below and if you want you can check them out they have a ton of extra practice materials out there so you can try some more out and see what you think of them but yeah that's it for today next we're going to be doing the target round